A study assessing the efficacy of finasteride previously demonstrated that using it for the duration of 12 months yielded a hair count improvement of 21 hairs per square centimeter versus placebo, while extending that usage to two years where the efficacy of finasteride usually peaks yielded a hair count improvement of about 27 hairs per square centimeter versus placebo. That's because the placebo group didn't take anything and their hair loss continued to progress due to the nature of androgenetic alopecia, while the treatment group not only had their hair loss slowed down slash stopped due to the effects of finasteride, but also got a little bit of that hair and a little bit of that density back in the areas most affected with DHT. So finasteride is indeed effective in treating androgenetic alopecia, but to what extent? Is it to the extent that makes us believe these personal anecdotes? In this video, we're going to examine these three personal cases and I'm going to explain why and when should you believe these results before and after pictures on Reddit or other forums or you should not. So in this first post, the gentleman posting this post claimed that he has been using finasteride for 4.5 years, four and a half years, and the area of concern for him is primarily his hairline and a little bit on his med scalp. And you can see here from using one milligram of finasteride plus minoxidil, he had been uh, successful in achieving this wonderful results so that even people that do hair transplants don't even dream of achieving such result. Now granted, you may say that we're only discussing in this video the usage of finasteride and evaluating the efficacy of finasteride, and this guy is also using minoxidil, so it's not a good criteria to choose a case for evaluation of the efficacy of finasteride only, but I'm trying to make a larger point here. Please stay to the end of the video so that you'll understand what I'm talking talking about. The second case that I wanted to show in this video is really similar to mine. This guy has primarily a uh, balding or thinning area in his vertex and a little bit on his mid scalp. So he has a little bit of that diffuse thinning that a lot of hair loss sufferers suffer from, me included. And you may have read on the internet that that particular type of balding diffuse thinning is the one that is the most responsive to pharmacological interventions and to DHT blockers like finasteride. So let's see the results that this guy achieved with finasteride. And his claiming, by the way, he's 30 years old, his claiming that after using one milligram of oral finasteride for the duration of 3.5 months, keep this in mind, only 3.5 months, he was able to achieve this wonderful result where basically if you even see this guy on the street, you wouldn't even notice at the first glance that he has even thinning hair. And the third case that I wanted to show you guys in this video is probably the most and the major one that will demonstrate my point. This guy has significant balding and thinning in all over his scalp. He is a Norwood 5 at least and he claimed that by using uh, finasteride or whatever pharmacological intervention, again this video is not only about finasteride but you'll understand my point after a few seconds, but he claims that using finasteride for only two months achieved this result. And he indeed says in the description that in the after photo, his hair is a little bit lengthier than in the before photo. So what am I saying here? Are these results fake? Well, uh, I'm going to uh, tell you guys and recommend to not really believe these results for two reasons. The first reason is these are personal anecdotes and you guys know when we discussed this before in the channel that there is a scientific evidence-based medicine hierarchy. So we believe um, medicine and facts, medical scientific facts, based on the degree of evidence provided to us to assert that fact and personal anecdotes are not even classified as evidence to confirm a scientific hypothesis. So that's the first one. You shouldn't try to even believe these personal anecdotes. Granted, these people could be really honest, but you've got to keep one thing in mind, guys. You could not take the before and after photos under the same exact same conditions. Uh, you may have a different camera device. You may have a different lighting conditions. You may have a different length or styling of your hair, you may have a different camera angle, or you may even be psychologically inclined to um, make flattering after photos, to make yourself uh, more comfortable and more satisfied that you made the 
the correct choice by taking this drug. And to prove my point, here's another post in Reddit showing the difference in the same individual who did not take any treatment and who took two pictures. And you can notice how the camera angle and lightning conditions can really make a difference in terms of showing better hair results. That's my first problem with these personal anecdotes. And the second one is what I just said. There is a scientific uh, hierarchy or an evidence hierarchy for believing clinical evidence and personal anecdotes do not classify as accurate scientific hierarchy. And this has been made for a reason, guys. You should never believe personal anecdotes because they have a lot of variables and I'm not in any way, shape or form accusing these people for having a malicious intent. But again, these personal anecdotes have a lot of variables, have a lot of biases sometimes. So we should only believe evidence-based science, which is uh, randomized clinical trial, placebo-controlled clinical trials. And what the clinical trials actually tell us about finasteride, does finasteride, is, is finasteride really able to achieve such results? Well, we uh, thankfully have the three clinical um, studies that were done on finasteride and they were uh, actually the ones that were responsible for its FDA approval for male pattern baldness. And what do these studies tell us? And from these studies, we conclude that the only and exclusive job of finasteride is to slow down or stop androgenetic alopecia, the progress of androgenetic alopecia. If you decide to take finasteride and you're anticipating and wishing for an improvement of your hair count and hair density and hair diameter, you are uh, misleading yourself because the only goal from taking finasteride is to slow down or stop the progress of androgenetic alopecia. And a lot of people have been mean to me in the comment section and saying, if you're so good and presenting yourself as a hair loss guru, which I'm not, by the way, I'm only uh, interested in the subject of hair loss and I'm a medical student who's interested in science uh, in general, but a lot of people have been giving me this criticism. If you're so good and understand the pathogenesis and how to treat it, why don't you treat yourself? And why do you have such weak um, hairline or why do you have thinning on your hair? And my response to that is has always been the same. First of all, that's uh, that's offensive. Okay, You shouldn't write uh, stuff like that in the comment, personal stuff like that. But second of all, I started finasteride in a later stage of my male pattern baldness. And uh, I didn't anticipate from the beginning for finasteride to reverse my baldness and give me uh, my teenage hairline. I didn't anticipate that because I knew the data. And the data says that if you want to really know what improvement should you wait from finasteride, you should not look at the data and the numbers that I gave in the beginning of the video. Instead, you should look at the improvement versus baseline, not versus placebo, because as we said in the beginning of the video, the placebo group kept losing hair. So you shouldn't compare yourself as a treatment group to the placebo group because your hair loss is now stopped or slowed down at least. So if you want to look at the pure uh, net improvement, you should look in the clinical data at the comparison for the results, the after results with the baseline, not with the placebo. And what these three clinical trials for finasteride tell us is that there was actually an improvement. I'm not saying there is not, but that improvement was of seven hairs per square centimeter versus baseline. Only seven hairs and seven hairs per square centimeter is I'm not saying it's nothing, but it's not as these people claim and these people show in their after pictures. So again, if you're going into this and if you're going to use finasteride because you're anticipating to get your hairline of your teenage years back, you're misleading yourself and you're going to lead yourself to actually have false expectations and eventually maybe even quit using the drug because you're thinking that it's not doing its job well. The only job of finasteride is to slow down or stop hair loss in the best cases. Maybe it achieves uh, some reversal of hair loss and some improvement in the hair count as we discussed in the clinical data, but that improvement is of only seven hairs per square centimeter. So you shouldn't count on it. You only should count on preventing androgenetic alopecia in the first place. And this is why I really appreciate Kevin Mann's message. Kevin Mann is a famous, maybe the most famous and the most appreciated among the hair loss sufferer community 
um, YouTuber which always preaches this message, which is you should only take finesse right anticipating your hair loss to be slowed down or stopped in the best cases. You should not take finesse right and approach this as it's going to uh, get you back all your hair because it's, it's not, guys. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel and click on that like button. Also, check some of my other videos about alternative hair loss treatments and uh, should I say potential future hair loss treatments that are currently in development by some of the most successful companies in this business like Kentro Pharma from China or uh, Bioneer Engineering from South Korea, good Korea as government says. So uh, if you want to do it, go and binge watch uh, my uh, videos on these particular compounds. But uh, that's it guys. Thank you for sticking up to the end of the video and as always stay safe.